Welcome to the Really Useful Podcast. My name is Christian Corley and I'm joined here by Ian Buckley. Hello folks, nice to be back. We are a pair of tech writers. We work primarily with um, the guys at makeusoft.com and uh, we are here to help you make sense of the latest tech news and to get the best tech tips and productivity that shows you how to do things so you don't worry about having to think about things and try to understand things that are possibly, quite likely, quite alien and new to you. Uh, in this week's uh, really useful podcast, we will be talking about the cryptocurrency price crash. Uh, if you yeah. don't know what cryptocurrency is, don't worry too much about that. You've probably heard a lot about it, and you may wonder why it's gone from being something that people are spending money on and buying to something that's collapsing. We're going to be talking about um, the Steam box, which is a little streaming box, which you can buy at the moment. It's, uh, it's Cyber Monday today, as we record this. You can buy it, buy it for mm. about $5. Uh, it's a great yeah. little gadget, does a lot of things. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a talk about Black Friday. I've got some tips for you on buying a new printer and what to do when your laptop keyboard isn't working. Uh, Ian, uh, it's a couple of weeks since we last spoke to you. How's things going? Fine, yeah. Um, uh, funnily enough, uh, that it fell today that we we're going to be talking about fixing laptop keyboards. Um, I, uh, I wasn't actually replacing the keyboard, but I spent uh, the last little while uh, fruitlessly trying to replace the screen in my beloved little uh, Livono laptop. Oh. Uh, I say fruitlessly because I, uh, I got a new screen for nice and cheap. And um, at some point in the future, I'm sure we will we'll, uh, cover how to replace a screen because it isn't as scary as it sounds. Um, however, I replaced the screen because uh, I wanted a better one. And what I did is I got the, the same, <laughs> but a slightly newer version of the same <laughs> screen. And there was nothing wrong with my old one. I, I, I completely misread the situation. Um, and other than that, the madness of moving is still happening. I mean, you've seen, uh, this, you know, we've discussed this at length, uh, but maybe not on the podcast. There's a reason why there's always a door and a wall behind me. Um, I'm in the middle of moving house, so uh, it is an absolute war zone to my left. Um, so this is an oasis of calm for me during the day. <laughs> OK, let's uh, push on then. Um, as, as I say, we're going to be discussing Black Friday in more depth um, and the, the whole Cyber Monday thing. We talked about about scams in the last really useful podcast so you can wind back and see that and just a, a quick hello to um, our new listeners as well we um thanks to the guys at make use um we're able to feature a few of our podcasts on there and uh I'll, I'll, the last time we did that or the first time we did that a couple of podcasts ago we um gathered um 50 new listens excellent. and excellent so welcome to all of you and we've got a hell of a lot of youtube subscribers as well waiting for the latest video to come along so um, that's this uh if you want to go over to youtube you'll get an email notification if you subscribe to the really useful podcast uh as to when a new podcast is out otherwise you can just subscribe to us on uh, itunes or player fm or whatever your preferred uh podcast subscription service of choice is okay so let's push on valve discontinues the steam link this the steam link i've got one not so far from here Although I may have put it away. Uh, it's um, This is a mobile phone. It's a, it's about that sort of size, the Steam Link. Yeah. It connects by uh, USB power supply. It's got an Ethernet cable. It's also got Wi-Fi and a HDMI output. And you can use it to stream games from your computer using the Steam uh, gaming system to your TV. It basically turns your, TV, uh, your, TV, your computer into a games console. Indeed, uh, it's yeah. Yeah, it's really useful. It's really cool. And you can also do other things to it. You can install Kodi on it for media uh, streaming. And you can install uh, retro gaming systems on it as well. Uh, and I've done both of these things and had a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, it's now five pa uh, five dollars, five pound if you're in the UK. Uh, but it is being discontinued. So if you want one of these, now is the time to get it. Indeed, yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like this is one of the ones where it's so cheap uh, and they're so small. If you ever have wanted to get something to maybe fiddle about, like Christian said, putting retro games on it or, you know, or heaven forbid, use it actually for what it's for, um, linking your Steam library to your uh, uh, your television, it's it's worth a punt. Like, um depending on where you're from um you can get it for you know a, a combined uh cost of a, probably a little more than five dollars because you need the, the postage cost yeah but they are it's it's certainly something worth playing with i you know i don't really understand why steam link wasn't as big of a success as i you know people thought it would be um yeah like one of the biggest complaints uh i've been i've been a pc gamer pretty much since day one not out of pride more out of necessity i didn't really have consoles mm. as such growing up 
And uh, one of the biggest complaints I've had with all the people I've known over the years that I've played online with is that uh, local multiplayer is, is not too easy and you want to share your love of games. Um, yeah, having a Steam, Steam box that allows you to just sit on your couch and just let your computer be running in your room sounds like a fantastic idea. Yeah. Um, I, I can only assume maybe like I've never had. Have you ever actually had hands on with it as a Steam box, or did you buy one specifically to hack? I bought it. Uh, why did I buy it? Um, I, I suppose I've always got one eye on hacking something yeah. when I buy it. Um, I did buy it to use it as a Steam box, and I found that it worked pretty well actually. The um, I mean, it's got two USB ports as well for yeah. uh, for game controllers. It's worth pointing out. The most use it got actually was with the Lego City game, mm. um, because my son loves Lego, and we played the Lego City on the PlayStation or the Xbox One at Legoland a couple of years ago, and it wasn't available on the Wii U in two-player. It was right. available on PC in two-player. Now, now we've got it on Xbox One, so it's not a big issue now. Mm. Uh, but we used it mostly to play Lego City, and it worked reasonably well. Um, mm. The problem really wasn't with the Steam Link. It was with Lego City, because Lego City on PC isn't... It's a bit sticky. Uh, oh, right. Regardless yeah. of your hardware, uh, mm. it's um, it's a bit buggy in that respect. But, you know, I've played other games. Uh, what's that guy? Duke Nukem, the new mm. Duke Nukem game. Um, uh, played shooters. Played all sorts with it, and... In fact, the thing I probably haven't played with it is Civilization, because uh, I just can't imagine sitting with a keyboard and mouse in front of my TV. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's where it maybe falls down in some yeah. regards, is that if you are someone who primarily plays games you know, with a keyboard and mouse, which is most PC gamers, to be fair, um, and, and if you are someone who, like, uh, you know, again, necessity rather than choice, I don't really have people around all that often, because I, I live in a shared house, we don't have a living room, I don't have a sofa. So if I'm playing games with people, it'll usually either be over the internet anyway. Yeah. Or, um, but the, but having said that, I'll, if you leave my situation aside, I've been at other people's houses where you know the, even if they have a smallish flat, they've got their computer in the you know the room that they work in, and uh, you know I've just been around just to have a curry or whatever, and they've there's games that they buy that they don't use for any other reason other than when people are coming around and. People who aren't necessarily into games can love those games. And I'm talking about people, things like uh, Gang Beasts and Human Fall Flat and uh, uh, Nidhogg. They're, they're all kind of uh, in, independently developed games which are designed for local multiplayer. Um, and I would argue that if you are someone that is into gaming and occasionally does have people around, um, the combined cost of, I don't know, $15 for the games and the uh, uh, games on sale, that is, and the Steam Link, is a worthwhile investment for the fun that you'll have with people doing it. You see? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I, even I, if it's I, just in the draw, you know, a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah, I think I suppose what we're saying really with this is it, it's been discontinued. Uh, it is an incredibly powerful little piece of kit that you can get for um, um, for Black Friday. It's, um, it's, it's $5. It's been available for less than that. Yeah, and yeah. It's worth getting one um, just to do other things with it, even if you don't want to do the gaming side with it. And there are other streaming options um, for gaming. It's now possible to play a PC game on an Android device thanks to Steam. Mm. Uh, there's a Steam app. The, the Steam link isn't integral to this. It's just a piece of kit that will connect your TV to your PC, essentially. Mm. Um, but it's such. It's coming up to Christmas. This is such a good little gadget to be getting someone that you know who's a fan of electronics and gadgets and mm. doing gaming. It, you know, it ticks so many boxes. As I say, you can install code on it for media streaming. You can put retro games on it. Um, you know, these things are going for a song, so it's worth. It's certainly worth picking one up. We're going to move on to um, Bitcoin. Now, I'm mm. uh, I'm one of these people who've bought cryptocurrencies, and I know that there is a very um, technical underlying technology that, to them mm. that means that they are as secure as things can get. But really, um, like most of you watching and listening, I and I say most of you watching and listening, mm. um, I don't really uh, get cryptocurrency. <laughs> uh, I get it as a concept. I just don't yeah. get it in my head how it works because it's quite complex. Um, are you uh, up to speed on that, Ian? I, I, well, here's one of the things. Um, I am one of the people who... Uh, I'm ashamed to say, for someone who is quite techy and all that kind of stuff, I'm one of the people that when Bitcoin first came along, I took one look at it and said, oh, what, you're, you're, you're trying to make your own money? Yeah, that's never going to work, and ignored it for a, a while. Um, yeah, me too, me too. But, but what I did do, uh, this is this is the extent of my investment in cryptocurrency. I did, I did actually get into it and get a wallet early in 
enough on that um, when I joined, I was given a nominal amount, but I was you're just given a, a small amount of Bitcoin for uh, just have you know just for I think for going with one particular company or wallet. Or, or, you know, I'm showing how little I know about it. And at the time, that was worth half of a penny, I think. Um, and uh, just to show you what has happened with cryptocurrency is I've never bought any, I've never sold any, but I. Uh, looked at that same wallet the other day and i now have eight pound fifty in bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so I, I kind of feel like i'm you know from from my perspective to be fair i i i'm very interested in cryptocurrency but that's because i'm very interested in the underlying technology behind it and it's on the long list of things that i'm kind of slowly in my off time doing a, a few online courses and and uh, you know in the uh, in the the back end of it and how hashing and all that that stuff works works and i'm very i'm at the very early stages of it um I, but i don't know it's weird i've got friends of mine who are ardent believers in bitcoin and they say it doesn't matter how much it goes up it doesn't matter how much it goes down it's here to stay cryptocurrency is the future of currency and i know other people who are not being ignorant of it like i am but they know a lot about it used to be involved in it and have made the decision to be out because they feel like it is dying off um mm -hmm. And it's a bubble that has already burst, but people don't realize it. Yeah. And it's, I, it really splits opinion, doesn't it? It, it certainly does. I mean, I bought uh, a light coin or a portion of a light coin and a portion. Yeah, that's right. 50 pounds on light coin and 50 pounds on Bitcoin. Mm. And they increased uh, to about 300 pounds mm. combined uh, in the space of three to six months. Yeah. And um, I was thinking, well, at, at this rate, I should be able to get five hundred pounds. I don't think that's pushing things too much. <laughs> um, let, let's go with this. See how it turns out. When it gets to five hundred pounds, I'll um, I'll sell these and I'll do mm. something else with them. Um, that was the idea. Of course, um, now they're worth sort of seventy-five pounds combined. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that's yeah, that's that, the that, thing. That yeah. Was sailed. Yeah. And my my feeling is that, um, and I'm, I'm not by, by any means claim myself to be an expert but i do claim myself to be an everyman and i do feel that you know the bubble has burst and if the bubble has burst people are going to lose interest in this and if they weren't interested in the first place having seen a bubble and watch it burst in very not so much slow motion but in real time in yeah. a very short space of real time i can't see there being an awful lot of confidence for crypto not in its current form going forward for a while mm. at least what do you think? I mean, as I say, it's very it's it's very difficult because I suppose it, now is the good time to say because of the you know the the, the things being the way they are that like it, it I, this is my opinion and in case you're worried it is okay to have an opinion about something you maybe don't know as much about as other people uh, just in case anyone out there is kind of uh, wondering and my uh, and I feel the same kind of way which is from a distance I have seen uh, secondhand through other people. Uh, the, some people who have, you know, got in quite early, done incredibly well, and the fluctuations don't really mean too much to them because they've already cashed out. Yeah, uh, they're still involved, but they've already cashed out. And as it was starting to really become big, I think the quote that def defines it was from a friend of mine who, uh, again, quite an early adopter, has done all right off it, um, but has had some big losses as well. Old old mate of mine from England, and said he realised that Bitcoin was dead when his mother asked him how she could buy some. <sighs> Um, and I know that sounds terrible and exclusive and, uh, you know, and I don't necessarily condone that attitude, but the, there's when, you know, statements like that make me kind of think, yeah, this was maybe something that was special by the fact that it was kind of misunderstood and it had the chance to grow in a vacuum. And now it's open and it's being picked away at like almost everything else that grows so big so quickly, you know? The good thing is uh, I don't have to worry too much about understanding cryptocurrency or anything like that because there is a handy website that can help us. How's that oh, for really? a segue? How's that for a segue? Um, <laughs> some, uh, some dear friends of ours uh, have uh, started a site called Blocks Decoded, um, which is uh, blocksdecoded.com, which is all about cryptocurrency and how to make sense of it. Um, I'm asking you because I don't honestly know. Uh, 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 are you part of this as well, Christian? Or? Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's some of our Microsoft colleagues, uh, Dan Price, uh, Gavin Phillips, who mm. contributes to this podcast from time to time, uh, Joe Coburn, and I think there's someone else, and I can't think who it is at the moment. Mm. Uh, they're working on their site called Blocks Decoded, which aims to um, make the whole crypto thing a lot clearer. 
Yes. And I, I think they pretty much uh, succeed with that. It's an easily uh, navigable site. You can view it on your tablet or your phone or your computer. And it tells you, you know, it helps you get started, tells you how blockchain technology is used in other things, which I think is probably the most interesting and important thing about cryptocurrency is the blockchain technology and how that is likely to be embraced. It's already starting to appear in, in mainstream banking. Yeah. Uh, as, as we see, it's um, being used in healthcare, in security and privacy. Uh, it's, I mean, that aspect of the technology is here to stay, even if cryptocurrency itself is not. Yeah. Well, that's that's certainly something that I, um, you know, when 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 we were kind of talking about my experience with this, um, while at, while actual cryptocurrency, I'm not so sure about. One of the reasons I'm so uh, into the idea of learning about the blockchain and um, you know how to uh, from from a coding perspective, how to use, well, I say coding, it's from from what I've worked out so far, it was a very small amount of the beginner course I've done. What it is, it's me learning how to do maths again. Hmm. Um, but one of the reasons I want to do it is because the it, the technology is uh, has much wider implications than, yeah. you know, a, a current cryptocurrency, which is a good, another, you know, good way of maybe saying that what you said has some credence, which is this round in your and many other people's opinions, this round of cryptocurrency, the bubble is burst and it is somewhat over. But the technology on which it rode is going to be there for the ne- whatever comes next. Yeah. Um, however, even that sentence alone will be making some people spit out the tea in rage because they don't. Uh, because it's a very, uh, it's a very divisive subject whether cryptocurrency is yes. going well or not. People have a large amount of money riding on it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, we'll move on. We've already talked yes. a little bit about Black Friday, and it is Black Friday weekend. It's now Monday, um, which was previously known as Cyber Monday. It's not really a phrase that's taken off in the UK, uh, although I, 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 I believe it is still used in the USA. Mm. And it's basically a time where, as you know, you get bargains. In it is bargains, price bargains on items that were had their prices inflated for a few months. Uh, yes. sort of back down to the, the, the yeah. biggest amount. Now, I um, before I ask you, mm. uh, Ian, I've um, I'm I'm someone who likes to keep an eye out for a bargain, and it is nearly Christmas, and I have children and myself who like lego so mm. i have made a black friday purchase and that was uh from the lego store online mm. in order to get a free lego kit on mm. a purchase of over 90 pounds mm. uh so i wouldn't normally have done if that although i have made a similar purchase in the past to get a free you know a special edition limited edition kit when you um pay a certain amount um but because it's christmas it's a christmas themed thing and it probably isn't going to be available after this weekend yes. so yeah, that's that's like the extent of my Black Friday um, shopping. What about yourself? Well, um, I, I'm sure I must have bought something uh, on a Black Friday deal in the past uh, because I've had to buy lots of things over time, and statistically, I must have done it by accident. That's as far as my Black Friday goes. Right. Okay. I, I, I don't. I, um, again, I don't want to come across as someone who is overly judging. I don't want to come across as someone who is this, that, and the other. But just to, to put it into perspective, me as a person, I'm perfectly social. I like people. But if I have to go shopping, if there is yep. a sale that I want to go to, I will go to that sale at perhaps 10 a.m. on a Tuesday so that I can avoid crowds of people. That's one of the reasons I enjoy working remotely and freelance uh, because I get to choose my hours like that. Yes. Um, uh, so I'm not necessarily judging the people that do uh, queue up outside shops. It's just that that is literally my idea of a nightmare yeah. in that I have had nightmares where I am being crushed in shopping centers. You understand? So Black Friday to me is the absolute um, is the absolute epic, like top of the mountain hell experience for shopping. Um, and, I, and, I, and I do find it very interesting because it is very barefaced now i don't think it's just kind of you have to look online to the people on the blogs who are telling you this kind of stuff i think there are on major uh, television channels there are always these shows that are telling you if you're being scammed or not and i think it is pretty common knowledge now that black friday is not as big of a deal as it used to be or could yeah. be which makes me think that it, the spectacle of it is something that people almost like um, and again, fair play if you really do enjoy, you know, waking up at 4 a.m. And, and running into a shop with a thousand other people. But, uh, oh, my God, it sounds dreadful. Cyber Monday sounds a lot more like my thing because that sounds like more. That sounds like I'm ordering things online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was um, yeah. I, I saw a couple, couple of days ago of a guy who's like the first guy to turn up at this store on 
Black Friday, and yeah. he was the only guy to turn up at this store on Black Friday. Oh wow, that's that's which, not bad. Which sounds miles better. He got a round of applause and everything, and he was yeah, he was filmed you know from inside. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I saw this on Twitter. I thought that that is you know that's what Black Friday should be. Everyone gets the store to themselves. Yeah. That'd be far, far better in my opinion. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned to me earlier um, before we started recording, I think, um, about Black Friday and that whole thing around it is how it's been imported into the UK. Uh, it has. Obviously, and, we're both British, yeah. but you live in Germany. Is it, is it a thing in Germany? It's very. Um, so it's 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 very much being forced in by a few players in that it's not something that has uh, in England now I almost feel like uh, there's a bunch of shops that probably even tried to do Black Friday and it didn't take off so they didn't bother whereas over here it's just not a thing but um, for example uh, I, I know it sounds weird because it's an online store but Amazon.de uh, has Black Friday sales and yeah. one of the bigger um, uh, uh, media electronics sales outlets here is called Media Markt which is a, a very it's I, I'm, I, I've, it's been so long since I lived in England. I can't think of the equivalent. But they sell everything. They sell computers. They sell washing machines. They sell everything electrical, basically. Maybe curries is a good yeah, yeah. example um, for an English one. And something like Best Buy in America, I, I suppose that kind of shop. Um, they will have uh, so-called Black Friday deals. But um, from the few people that I've actually asked about it and spoke to about it this year, there isn't really anyone that cons- considers it something that it's it's very obviously being kind of pushed in um but i imagine that will be changing more and more as time goes on simply because a lot of the shops now are either international or owned by international companies and if their main purchasing kind of empire as you want if you want <laughs> a much better word than empire i'm sure um is in the usa then they will probably want to put those customs uh, on it yeah um, another slight point, um, it's not quite the same, but another slight point is uh, Berlin is a very strange uh, subject, not subject, a very strange example. Um, other parts of Germany probably celebrate things a bit differently. So, for example, Berlin, Thanksgiving is quite widely uh, celebrated because there's so many Americans here. Well, of course, the um, city was American 20 years yeah, ago, wasn't it? So. Exactly, yeah. So um, it's uh, it's an interesting kind of sample group. Um and it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, more things like that did catch on. But I, by the same token, I, I, it seems unlikely, really. Um, okay. um, I wonder, just before we move on from this, mm. um, in Germany, is it called Schwarz Freitag? Um, I, do you know what? I, I, I just started looking it up just because you said that. And uh, uh, there's two sites, and they both okay. are Black Friday and Black Friday. So oh, they, uh, I think they're keeping the English, uh, the English <laughs> thing for it. Um, which is, uh, but you know what? I, it doesn't surprise me in a weird way because uh, the the German word for if you are tr- tr- riding on a, a train without a ticket, the German word for that is Schwarzfahren, which means to travel black. Yeah. Um, like, and so since that has a negative yeah. connotation, I wonder whether <laughs> Schwarzfahren would be Bad Friday. <laughs> yes. Bad Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, day to forget. Okay. <laughs> yes. So anyway, that's, German that's Black Friday. Yeah. Um. It's. I mean, there's an awful lot new to say about Black Friday. It's happening, the Cyber Monday. It's this whole discount thing that um, sits on this American model. And there's a good chance that you, uh, watching or listening to this, are American. Um, we are interested in hearing about your Black Friday experiences, though, and especially if you've uh, run into any scams or you've been caught in a scam over Black Friday. We did talk in the last podcast about avoiding scams, but if you've been caught in a scam either this year or in a previous year, uh, do get in touch with us. Uh, you can uh, get me... On Twitter, I am the Gadget Monkey. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Twitter, I'm also on uh, Facebook as the Gadget Monkey. And before we move on from that, um, in a very similar vein, if uh, if you are someone that got something on Black Friday, we'd lo- love to hear from you. If you are someone that sort of shares my view and aren't really too keen on the idea of Black Friday, but are still looking into different ways of finding deals, especially if those ways involve technology, for example, do you have a Google Alerts set up? And if you don't, would you like to know how to use them? Because that's something we can cover in a future sure. podcast. Um, uh, Because that's one thing that while we don't have time to go over it today, you can use technology quite easily to to follow prices of things that you want to buy. And instead of waiting for one big day when you're supposed to get the sale, which may be a fake sale, um, you can actually monitor prices and make an informed decision. Um, And if you're already doing that or would like to learn how to do that, please let us know because that might be something we can cover soon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, great idea. Okay, Uh, eight things to check when you're buying a new printer uh, the thing about printers of course uh, as we discussed on the previous release for podcast is that they're ridiculously cheap and right. if it goes wrong 
if you bought a cheap one, you can just replace it with another cheap one, which will probably cost you about the same as some ink, and you get free ink with it. In fact, yes. there's even an argument for not bothering to buy ink, just buy a new printer and get the ink. What a crazy world, but yes, it's true. <laughs> Yep, it's it's absolutely true, and the, the, uh, it's weird. There's two there's two things I think that p- get lost when people are buying printers because they're, they're something that have been so contentious. They're, there's no bigger cliche, and as I mentioned, I think in the last po- uh, podcast that we talked when we talked about this, um, there's no bigger cliche than the person swearing at their printer because it isn't working. Yeah. Um. Uh, but the two things that I think get lost. The first is what you said is in the way things are these days. It's almost it almost makes sense to buy a new printer every time, which is a dreadful waste and you know the yep. dreadful for the environment all this kind of stuff but that's that's uh, as a consu- as a good consumer choice that probably makes sense the second thing i think people forget is when they're buying a printer they are buying it for a specific reason it's uh, i know most people that you know uh, uh, they they're buying a printer cuz you need a printer in the house but do you really need a printer that can print photo realistically has two points of entry um, has a you know a high quality scanner all that kind of stuff on it now the likelihood is you do want something which is a printer scanner for a uh, general use that's fine but uh, as I think I mentioned last time I have a black laser jet printer and it is perfect because the only thing I ever need to print out is pretty much government forms or it, you know anything that just needs to be readable I don't yeah. print photos at home uh, and I don't need to scan very often when I do I have a separate flatbed scanner which I got free with my I think I got free with my iMac 12 years ago. Still works perfectly, you know? Um, that said, there are specific things you should look into. Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if you if, if you want to uh, if you want to go over a few of those and I uh, can pick yeah. up. Um, well, first thing to do, obviously, is um, make sure you know how much you've got to spend and stay within that budget. And that goes with anything that you're buying technology-wise. Uh, you should also know about the type of ink and how much ink is required two ink cartridges, four ink cartridges, ink wells. Um, and there's a budget around the ink as well. Mm. You know, you could be spending £12 on a printer and then find, uh, this is an extreme example, and then find that the ink cartridges are like £40, £50 pound each, and you, you don't want to be doing that. Yeah, well, that, that's the beauty of getting an ink well printer. Um, and I think if I ever was to get another colour printer, I would get one just simply because it sidesteps what we were talking about last time, having to get specific ink cartridges that fit your printer. Yeah. If you get an inkwell printer, you buy bottles of ink. And, of course, there's an argument that there could be varying qualities of ink. But, yeah, you're buying a bottle of ink, you're filling a well uh, within the printer. And um, that, to me, also, they, uh, it, from what I have uh, heard, inkwell printers last a lot longer between changes. Right. Okay. Um, the quality of the print output as well. Um, you know, inkjet is the kind of the cheapest option for printers, and they will start at sort of 600 by 600 dots per inch. Uh, that's yes. the DPI abbreviation that you'll see when buying a printer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the the better, the lower quality of that is, I suppose, um, the better quality the print is going to be on default mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your print speed, and um, that is PPM pages per minute. Uh, you. You might not have a particular requirement for this. You might just want to print out a few forms every now and again. Mm. Or you might, like me, want to uh, print out scripts and go through them and find the obvious mistakes and scroll over them with red pen and before you go back and do it again, mm. uh, which might require you having to output things a bit quicker. Um, you might get five pages per minute. You might get 25, 50 pages per minute. It will also depend on your print quality and what you're printing. Scripts in black will come out quickly. Letters in black will come out quickly. Uh, photos, not so quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, wireless, that about right. Yeah, wireless connectivity is a big advantage. I, I'd be just—I don't think there's any printer over thirty dollars that you can get that isn't wireless at the moment. Yeah, no. Uh, if if there, I mean, if there is, it would have to be a very very specific use case. Um, yeah, totally. Uh, um, it, it just, and we're talking desktop that. printers rather than yeah. we're, not, we're not we're not talking like um, receipt printers. We're not talking anything no, like no. that. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, you're probably going to get wireless. It might be wireless and Bluetooth as well. Uh, but look for something that will support Apple AirPrint or Google Cloud Print as well uh, to, to, to get the, the best option for printing. You know, these days you can print from a, from a smartphone, which is, you know, it's crazy, really. Yeah. Uh, um, if you can get something that does more than a printer, or if you're looking for something that does more than just print, if you can get something that has a built-in flatbed scanner on top, there's an advantage and a disadvantage from this. If one part of it goes wrong, You've got to get rid of the whole thing yeah. if you're going to get it replaced. 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, if it will do all in one photocopying, if it's also got a sheet feeder at the top for scanning, that's mm-hmm. good. Most of them will do faxes as well, but uh, after an initial kind of phase out of faxing about 10, 15 years ago for um, these devices, where it was then they're reinstated, it does seem to be slowly going again. Yeah, it's very, uh, it, it, it's one of those things where it's, it's very odd that I, I think I've sent three faxes in the last 10 years. Um, and uh, there are still places now and again where there is the option of doing it. But uh, the, the general argument, and it is a good argument, which is, you know, you, the, the places where you can fax are almost all updating to the point that you could at very least email um, and save yeah. yourself a print. Um, yeah. And which, again, covers the whole, like, goes back to the point of if you have a scanner, um, and an internet connection, it's very rare that you would have to fax something unless you're dealing with some kind of odd bureaucracy where it has to be that. Yeah, totally. Um, and uh, uh, that, that's the, that's the, the argument. It's, a, it's an interesting argument for the for and against the all-in-one printer scanner kind of thing because, um, as you say, if one part of it goes wrong, then you have to replace the whole thing. And it's almost more of an aesthetic argument because, um, you know, if you are someone that uh, is, is comfortable with the idea of, uh, for example, maybe having you using more than one piece of software. So uh, if you have a, a print uh, a scanner that is just a, a, a normal flatbed scanner, and you can get cheap, high quality flatbed scanners, which um, you know, uh, which are a separate unit, very small. Um, and if you're comfortable enough with the technology to have that set up and have the printer set up, then that means if one goes wrong, you can just replace it easily without having to replace a whole unit. But that is taking up two spaces in your cupboard then. Yeah, totally. Or on your desk then. And uh, also, you know, no matter how uh, uh, good the two separate pieces of software you would use, if indeed you used to, um, then yeah, it's not quite as kind of, you know, aesthetically pleasing as something that's all in one. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting catch-22 really, isn't it? Do you want to it risk is, having yeah. to spend more in the future? <laughs> totally, totally. Um, I think just to finish off as well, um, be, be certain about exactly what it is you're expecting from your printer. If you've got limited space, and we're talking yeah. about space there, uh, you can get portable printers. I mm-hmm. I mean, these have been around for years as well. I used a portable printer about 20, 25 years ago for college work because mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, the printer in our house was a very unreliable dot matrix. Mm-hmm. It was a school holiday, so I couldn't get into college, so I had to borrow a printer off a, a friend's parent. And this was a HP unit, um, and it was surprising. It was about the size of a, like a heavy tome. It was about mm-hmm. this big, and it had a little uh, kind of a panel down the side that you would, would hinge so you could twist it around to stand it up, and you mm-hmm. flip it open, stick it on the desk, plug it in, and it just it was like single feed you give it a sheet of paper single feed yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's yeah, really I, good i had a mate with one of those they were really really nice little things and, and again that's something that had crossed my mind is that i've got you know i have got my my uh laser printer here but um having seen uh having you know i, I was just kind of casually when uh, looking into this podcast i was just kind of casually just looking over videos of them and seeing one which is admittedly quite expensive but just uh, an incredibly quick portable desk thing that he had next to his keyboard and just went zzz and zzz. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. i could put that in my rucksack and it's smaller than my laptop totally. you know? yeah, yeah 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 it's yeah they're, they're great little things so you know if you're not doing a lot of printing um yeah but you you think you're going to need a print at some point and you don't need to do any photocopying because look you've got a phone and you can do all the scanning you need to do by taking a photo of it with your phone um one of those portable printers might be exactly what you're looking for small mm. enough to put away just get out when you need it even if you need to take it to the office or whatever you can stick it in your backpack as ian mm. says uh so yeah that is um things to keep an eye on when you're buying a new printer let's move on to our final item in this week's really useful podcast uh laptop keyboards yes they, they are a, a parent i mean they are probably the weak point of every laptop i think it's fair to say i think that is fair to say yeah um and and, and not only as they so kind of the the weak point not in terms of them stopping working but it can even just be a, a single broken key on a laptop can render a very expensive laptop almost useless especially if it's the left shift key and you're someone that types a lot you see what i mean totally. um yeah yeah well i've had a few of these yep. things happen to me recently mm. um first of all there's the hp laptop my big hp desktop replacement laptop yeah uh, the keys seem to be slowly not working like they're, they're dying in patches mm. it's 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 quite worrying it's yeah it's it's um it's a slow it's a slow thing and so i, I clearly i think that the the, the 
the keyboard component is defective and mm. eventually it's going to need replacing. I've tried lots of things to, to, to do this. And unfortunately, because there's different ways of replacing keyboards, mm. not only depending on the manufacturer, but also depending on the particular laptop line, uh, this is going to require taking the laptop apart completely. Yes. And then yep. replacing it with a an all-in-one keyboard component. Mm. Now, some laptops, it's really easy. You can just unclip the keyboard, buy a new keyboard, clip the keyboard into the top of the laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, with this particular HP, it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, Dell keyboards, they can also, you can buy a new keyboard for a Dell laptop, and that will require you unclipping something at the back, uh, the underside of the laptop, and replacing the keyboard that way. Again, the problem I have, because it's a top-end laptop or a above mid-range at least um it's a bit more complicated to do yeah. it's annoying so you really dear listener dear viewer want to avoid um getting yourself in a situation like this which is basically uh to um to focus on keeping your laptop clean nine yes. times you know um i would say 90 percent of keyboard issues uh come from dirt mm -hmm. rather than anything else uh so you it, it Dirt and dust can uh, clog up your keyboard uh, if you eat anywhere near your laptop. Mm -hmm. that, you know, stuff is going to end up flying off your food. Even, you know, this distance, where we're looking about two feet between me and the camera mm. on this laptop. Food, if I bit into a sandwich now, food is going to, you know, crumbs are going to fly into the keyboard. Uh, so um, there are things you can do to keep a keyboard clean. And, you know, it might be a vacuum cleaner, it might be a standard brush, it might be turning your laptop upside down with it switched off and just tapping the back mm -hmm. and running your fingers over the keys while it's upside down to get some dust, loosen the dust up, heading back to it with a vacuum cleaner. It might be a compressed can of air. It might That's be what I was going to suggest, yeah. yeah. It might be one of those mm -hmm. special putty things. I think um, probably the best option is to uh, try all of these things mm -hmm. um, and do it probably weekly to keep your laptop clean. Obviously, throwing a cup of coffee isn't going to be good for your laptop. Uh, keyboard yeah. or indeed any other part of your your laptop but uh, you know basic maintenance on your laptop keyboard is going to keep it running a lot longer this new computer that i'm using now is an asus and um, when i this is actually the second one of these that i got because the first mm. one and this probably kind of demonstrates how important it is to to maintain your keyboard and to keep a close eye on the keyboard is the first one i got uh, one of the arrow keys uh flew off the moment i touched it yeah yeah well, the uh, so the the cap itself was was it cracked underneath or was it the um, actual switch that was? Uh... I'm not sure if it was the, the, like the spring components underneath mm. were in properly or whatever. But basically, I I pressed. I was playing uh, Civilization and I wanted mm. to move a piece, and uh, I'd forgotten because I was playing Civ Six and I don't think you can actually use arrow keys to move a piece. You have to use mm. the mouse and right click, and um, by pressed an arrow and uh, ping, up it flew. <laughs> so yeah uh and you know that was brand new that was the first thing i'd done with it i'd got set windows up installed Civ, and you know right. that's what that sounds about right yeah <laughs> windows Civ, and then yeah the work Ding. afterwards <laughs> yeah, yeah uh so yeah i mean there's there are other reasons why a laptop keyboard will stop working beyond dirt and dust it might have a bad internal connection uh, mm. between the keyboard itself and the motherboard of the laptop uh it might be a bad hardware driver that is something that you can sort out by um um using windows to install a new driver it might just be poor manufacturing as well uh, in which case you should probably get the laptop back to the supplier as quickly as possible uh, yes. have you had any problem with laptop keyboards because obviously there's a very simple fix for a laptop keyboard not working and that is to attach a usb keyboard yeah i mean uh, that is uh that's definitely uh, the kind of the the middleman solution in any situation if your uh, keyboard is knackered and you need it to work now um, it, I'm, I'm sure it's something that anyone who listens to the show would already know, but on the very off chance that you don't, any USB keyboard will work with your laptop, and it'll, um, uh, and or even if it's a, a different layout keyboard. So, for example, um, I have a, a laptop that I bought here in Germany, which has a German key layout, but I have it set up so that I can plug my English key layout keyboard into it, and it works natively and quickly. Yeah. Um, but I, I would, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I've had various problems over the years um the one computer i probably had the most problem with is a computer that i used to use for um working I, I, when i say working it was you know music at production and video so it was on site a lot um in various places 
Um, and for me, uh, yeah, a, a Hoover and compressed air is an absolute uh, godsend. Um, and uh, and because of the situations that I was in with it, um, a big problem for me was liquid damage. Um, I, I had to not only replace the keyboard, but I had to replace a whole laptop at one point just because someone spilled a pint over it. Um, oh. Which was not ideal, but um, but being the good uh, musician I was, I had backed up my uh, stuff a little while before, luckily. Um, it's a, an interesting point that, again, we probably don't have time to go into, but I feel like we are approaching a slightly different epoch in terms of electronics, especially consumer electronics, because we're, we're coming to a point now where almost every smartphone has an IP rating. So you can use them in the rain. If you accidentally drop them and they get slightly damp, and that's not going to break them. And people are getting used to the idea of things having a bit more waterproofness being more waterproof, sorry. Um, and uh, just in case, uh, I'm sure once again, uh, our listeners and watchers know this already, but that does not apply to anything to do with computers. Mm. Um, if you are going to, it's if you're working and you've got a cup of coffee next to your computer, everybody does it, it's fine. But um, it's, yeah, uh, it's still only going to take one or two drops of any liquid to stop your keyboard and perhaps your entire laptop working. So totally. Um, yeah, uh, we talk, when we talk about things getting in between the keys, we're just talking about dust uh, and stuff like that. If you get any yeah. liquid in, you want to, as soon as you can, turn that off, let it dry, and hope. Pray. Mm -hmm. And make sure it is dry before you switch it back on. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, do you know, that sage salient advice brings us to the end of this week's really useful podcast. Uh, we'd be very grateful if you could leave us a review on itunes or stitcher about what you thought of the podcast and share us with your friends and your family the technophobes in your life uh we're here to give tips and to uh decode the news uh for one of a better term uh so that everyone has a better appreciation of technology without getting bogged down with the jargon and the stuff that they don't know we'll be back next week until then, have a great week. Nice, goodbye.